Hey everyone, my name is Jason Scott, head of Startup Developer Ecosystems here at Google in the United States. And I am thrilled today to be joined by Dr. Nalita Gomez, co-founder and VP of Strategic Foresight at YZ. She's gonna tell us all about what that uh, means and her role and her founder story. Um, for those who don't know um, yet, YZ is a retail startup that aims to bring digital efficiency into the physical world. As Jason mentioned, my name is Nelida Gomez. I am one of the four co-founders of YZ. Last year, Min Chen, our CEO who lives in San Francisco and I uh, participated in the first cohort of women founders of the Google for Startups. And I need to say that the, that was a great experience. I mean, I would say for all of us. Yeah, and I... um. Having you in the accelerator program was uh, such a joy for us as well, and it was um, amazing to to hear more hear about your experiences um, and hear your contributions during the program. And I think um, it's no secret, of course, um, for both women in STEM and people of color in STEM and and, and founders, it's um, it's been challenging, and the numbers speak for themselves. But we'd love to hear about your unique experiences, how they led you to becoming a founder and starting YZ. Uh, when I reached my 50s, I quit my job and I went back to grad school. I went to business school to learn how knowledge can be transformed into services and goods for the society. I need to say that building a startup from scratch um, and to bring it to where it is right now, you know, it's, 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 it's something that you need to be ready for, not only from the knowledge point of view, but also from the emotional point of view. And it's a, it's a struggle, and especially when you are born like us in, a, in an environment where innovation is incipient. And, um, you know, we are four uh, co-founders to women, Min, uh, Min and I, and um, we are from uh, multicultural backgrounds. And we have, um, you know, we are totally convinced that what we are doing is going to change the way in which retail is 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 um, is operating right now. The last year, in particular, has been really challenging for retailers and, and CPG companies, um, given lockdown and the pandemic. And I'm really curious um, how you've seen YZ support these companies and kind of what's in store for mm -hmm. the future um, in lever and for retailers and CPG companies leveraging data and machine learning in an interesting way. Yes, uh, yeah. Well, we all know past the, uh, in, in the past year there have been big changes in the way in which uh, uh, consumers behave, but also in which uh, companies operate. Uh, the pandemic accelerated digital uh, transformation for about 10 years and shopping patterns are changing rapidly. And this is something that we all acknowledge. And these patterns are now being differentiated based on geographical, cultural, and segment preference. So that means that uh, companies need granular and fast data. Uh, to see the strengths and to plan accordingly. And uh, in the case of retail, this data is also needed to manage product assortments to meet these demands. So within this context, YC is uniquely positioned to anticipate these needs because of our business model, because of our IA, a, a, a artificial intelligence a technology, and also because the granularity of the data we collect in real time. I know uh, there was a, some recent exciting news with respect to your fundraising effort. Yes, that's right, that's right. We recently were informed that we have been the recipient of a nearly, a, a, of a grant of nearly a quarter of a million dollars and that we applied last um, November but while being busy with the acceleration with the, uh, um, by Google. So this grant will allow us to develop and streamline our product capabilities in predictive analytics and the re um, related uh, dashboard. We have been recipients of grants before, small and big ones. And last year, as part of a consortium, we um, also I, I got a grant, a big one, a biggie, from the Benny of Ocean Initiative and the Coca-Cola Foundation to run a pilot project in Panama to prevent river plastic from reaching the ocean. That's awesome. And of course, uh, if you can get access to non dilutive capital, that's um, a, a huge win for a founder um, in this climate, especially. And um, yeah, I would love to dive a little bit more into that and kind of understand in your opinion, why and is non dilutive capital important? And in particular, also, um, how what advice do you have for startup founders and teams who are interested in, in, in 
having similar successes with respect to um, finding non dilutive capital and successfully getting it? Yeah, well, non dilutive funding keeps first, most important, your equity intact. And um, there are different types of non dilutive funding. They come, they go from debt financing, licensing, royalties to grants. In my case, I am more familiar with grants because, uh, because of my background in science. And uh, grants uh, helps a lot with your uh, research and development for the future um, developments of your product. And this is true for any startup, doesn't matter whether it's early stage or middle stage or growth. Um, um, you know, funding, um, non-dilutive funding you can find from governments, non-profit organizations, uh, national and international foundations, international organizations like the United Nations World Economic Forums, all of them have some sort of non-dilutive financing or a competition where you can, you know, a position um, your startup and, uh, and, 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 um, and, and gain a goodwill. So, and what is good about grants is that you know that they come every, you know, every year or every certain, uh, you know, month. So you can uh, be, uh, be prepared. So in that sense, I have a couple of pieces of advice for founders. First, you need to inform yourself about the type of different non-dilutive funding. For instance, I, I, I didn't know, and I bumped into this, uh, I, I didn't know that, for instance, an initial coin offering is regarded as a non-dilutive uh, funding source. Second, you need to determine which of this type of funding uh, uh, suits better, fits better uh, uh, your needs uh, within your growth strategy. As I mentioned, you know, we have found that uh, at YC that grants and competitions uh, fits much better our, our uh, research and development. And uh, here we combine different aspects. We have a, a strategy to deal with this. And um, first you need to know uh, the grant process uh, because every source uh, has a, a different a, a process. And then you need to look at your roadmap because you are writing now a grant to get money for something that is going to happen nine months or 12 months later. So you need to that, uh, that uh, you need to have that into a uh, consideration. Third, and this is something that I like uh, um, very much. You know, grants is grant writing is a collaborative effort, and I learn tons every time that I sit to write. I engage, you know, uh, 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 I, I talk to the engineers, I talk to the product managers, the financial managers, to the st sales staff, and um, in my particular case, I need to have a concept. I need to know what I am writing the grant for. So I advise uh, founders, you know, to have a concept to understand what it's all about. So in my case, I pass this concept to uh, through the uh, executive management for feedback, and then I sit and I, as I mentioned, you know, I learn uh, learn tons every time. And lastly, um, you know, you need to be convinced. You need to sit and write, you know, whether whether it's a, a, a financing or, or, or a grant. You need to be totally convinced that out there, there is enough money, that there are funding waiting for you to tap into it. And this is valid not only for the US, this is valid for any geography. Every government or, you know, there are international, as I mentioned, um, for, um, foundations that have, that have money ready for you to tap into it. So you need to, to be totally convinced that you are going to get it, that you are writing a grant for it. I, I love that last piece. I think um, it's true. <laughs> that can be that can be applied to so many things. But yeah, you um, as founders, I think you always have to be convinced that you are um, the right solution, right, for the problem. So I love that. Um, well, I guess uh, what's next and what's what's in store next for YZ? Mm. Well, developing and optimizing AI to serve uh, the needs of the CPG brands and retailers, uh, and that includes shelf intelligence, demand forecasting building a novel industry data sets 
with granular data in real time. We are also closing um, important sales contracts with glo uh, global uh, customers. We are uh, moving forward with our SAP partnership. We are extending our sales uh, partnerships um, around the world. And uh, we are getting ready, or actually we started our strategy to raise USA by the end of this year. And we are really looking forward to raise a very excellent, excellent, excellent USA. Thank you.